स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning, everyone. So today I am going to start the first lecture of this uh, lecture course series, that is on calculus of variations. As I have told in my introductory video, that this course is primarily on the introduction to calculus of variations with specific applications in control theory and nano mechanics, which will be introduced towards the later half of this course. so just to introduce all the students uh, regarding what this branch is all about so calculus of variations let me denote calculus of variations by this shorthand abbreviation cov so cov is concerned about the maximization about the maximization or the minimization of functionals so as we move along the course i am going to talk about what are functionals so functionals just in layman's term these are mappings from the set of functions to real numbers from the set of functions to real numbers okay so we will talk about x so when we talk about calculus of variations it is all about finding the maxima or minima also known as the extrema of functions so the extremals in this case these are not not real numbers but these are functions itself right as opposed to what is regularly taught in multivariate calculus as opposed to vectors as opposed to vectors in rn or in finite dimensional calculus so so with this brief very brief introduction let me also talk about the history of this course right so calculus of variations is has all along been with us since the 1800s the early mention of this course this this topic was done by the bernoulli brothers and i am going to over the uh, over the discourse i am going to reveal some of the problems that were introduced by these mathematicians right and then this course was also further you know introduced by several other mathematicians including leibniz euler lagrange and legendre so as we go along this course i am going to introduce several important results related to this course which were introduced primarily by euler and lagrange and towards the end when we talk about the sufficient conditions for finding the extremals there there is a very vital contribution by legendre so in the 1900s more contribution came from uh, jacobi from weierstrass we are going to introduce some uh, set of other important results from weierstrass as well as jacobi over the later half of this course in fact in uh, in the international Co congress of mathematicians it was hilbert who introduced the famous 23 problems the 23 problems in calculus of variations and finally in the 20th century 
the contribution came from from well the likes of Hilbert from the likes of you know Nothers we are going to introduce a very vital result by Nother as well as Tonnelly, Lebeg and uh, finally Hardmard. Well, so since then you know this, uh, this topic has primarily found several applications, uh, two of which we are going to introduce in this course. Now then, then uh, let me also introduce some uh, applications of this course. This course Uh, this topic is primarily applicable in the areas of mechanics, namely classical mechanics starting from continuum mechanics as well as electrodynamics. And uh, we will also see that some of the applications that arise in economics. namely in urban planning and uh, some of the other non-traditional areas. So, uh, then a, a very vital application that we are going to introduce over the uh, later half of this course is the application in control theory. And finally, we, uh, we time uh, over and over again during the different parts of this lecture series, I am going to introduce several applications in mathematics, which includes case studies in geometry and differential equations. So, these are these problems are widespread throughout the discourse of this lecture series. So, let me start with giving some, some classic examples starting with the very, very simple case study. So, let me call this as case 0, right. So, let me, uh, let me introduce the topic of uh, extremization of functional with the classic gold diggers problem, right. So, as the name suggests, the person who has to in this in this problem there is a field let us say there is a field that has lots of golds in patches let us say these these patches they represent gold and the idea the objective of of the person who is digging the gold out of the field is to traverse find a path such that he can he or she can collect the maximum amount of gold right so so the problem is as follows so we consider we consider a field containing particles of gold and the objective is to collect the most amount of gold by choosing the best path right so we are given one we have to out of the family of different paths we have to choose the best path so that we can collect the maximum amount of gold and however the problem that we have is that the the total path length in this case is limited so whatever path we choose we have to make sure that the total length of that path cannot exceed a certain value. So, in this problem we can see that we are maximizing a function of a function. So, so what are we doing? We are collecting we are collecting gold. So, gold is collected on the path and that path is the integral 
that path is the integral of the gold at each point at each point okay and further i have mentioned that the length of the path is fixed and so we can see that we are maximizing we are maximizing an integral which is our path length an integral over a path for all possible paths that is we are maximizing a function of a function so we can see that the integral over the path in this case is is the the integral of over a path in this case is the function and the gold the gold collected the gold collected the gold collected is is another function another function so we are we are maximizing a function of a function right where this function is the amount of gold collected and this function is the integral over all possible paths that that are available with fixed path length yes so the second problem that i want to discuss is the problem of catenary that was originally introduced by the younger of the bernoulli brothers jacob bernoulli in 1690 so i'm going to state the the simplest version of this problem and over the course of our lecture series i'm going to show you the solution as well as the different variations of this problem so the simplest version is as follows so let us assume that we have let us assume that we have two poles of different lengths let us say the first pole is of length y0 and the second pole is of length y1 and the two poles are separated by a distance d apart pole 1 has an x coordinate x0 and pole 2 has a y has an x coordinate x1 and within between the two poles we have a rope which is hanging so that the end points of the rope are fixed on the top of these two poles and the rope the shape of the rope is completely influenced by the action of gravity so it is completely weight which is determining the shape of the pole so the problem is as follows the problem is let us consider a thin uniformly heavy thin uniformly heavy flexible flexible cable uniformly heavy flexible cable suspended from the top of the two poles as i have shown in the figure and the poles are of height y0 and y1 respectively as shown in the figure again and these are spaced a distance of d apart so the problem says we have to figure out the optimal shape we have to figure out the optimal shape of the cable between these two poles right okay so now the problem 
says that we have to find the optimal shape. So, this question is what is it that we are trying to optimize? It turns out that we are trying to optimize the total energy of the system or we are trying to minimize the total energy of the system. So, as the cable is not moving the total energy is just the potential energy. So, we see that the cable assumes a specific shape which will make which makes the potential energy. So, I denote the potential energy by P e which makes this potential energy the minimum right. So, that is that is the governing factor of the shape of this cable. Now, further there are some simplifying assumptions we assume as the problem says we assume homogeneous homogeneous mass per unit length length and let us say that mass per unit length is given by m. So, the pole sorry the cable is a homogeneous cable the mass is distributed homogeneously throughout the length of the cable and then further the gravitational constant is denoted by g. So, in this case let us say our potential energy let us denote it by w p. So, in this case my potential energy w p is denoted by the total summation or the total integral of mass times the gravitational constant times the height of the cable above the ground. And we, we see that uh, we, we see that this particular integrating variable s is, is the arc length of the cable right and this particular variable y is the height is the height of the cable at s at s units along along the length of the cable right ok. Now, then further we assume we assume that the length of the cable the length of the cable is fixed. So, in fact, this potential energy is integrated over the entire length of the cable integral 0 to L. And the simplest version of this problem we assume that this length although it is fixed, but it is an unknown in the problem right ok. Now, so this is this is the original we see that this particular let me denote it by by 1. So, 1 denotes an integral of a function. So, y is the height function and w p is the function or the integral of a function and hence w p the potential energy is a functional. So, we can then the, the next step of this problem is to recast this particular problem denoted by this 1 in a simpler form. So, so we recast So, we recast 1 in in the Cartesian the Cartesian coordinates let us let us say that let us say my x coordinate is along this direction and my y coordinate is along this direction. So, we recast our problem in the Cartesian coordinates using the fact that the length element d s is the square root of d x square plus d y square. So, simple Pythagoras theorem or this can also be recasted as follows this is this is 1 plus d y by d x square times d x right 
or this is also equal to the integral of sorry the square root of 1 plus y prime. So, when I say prime this is the derivative with respect to x. So, y prime square times d x. So, that is my arc length in terms of the height and the, the x coordinate of the system. So, finally, my, my potential energy now can be recast into, into the Cartesian variables. So, we have in terms of x my, the, my end points in the x coordinate are x 0 and x 1 and my new functional is m g y of x times d s which is given by 1 plus y prime square d x. Okay. So, let us let us denote this new functional by 1 prime and we see that that the unknown of the problem or what we are trying to optimize is or find the optimal solution is the solution to this y of x which is the height of the cable at, at a distance x. So, we assume one assumption in this optimization problem is we assume that the solution to 1 prime, the solution to 1 prime, the solution y of x is continuous and piecewise, piecewise differentiable at the at the barest minimum, right. And then further we can ignore, we can we can ignore some of the constants in the problem. You can ignore constants like m g. So, this, this is just a constant in the setup and we can take it equal to 1 or ignore it. right? And in that case, the new functional in this catenary problem reduces to reduces to the following functional. Let us denote this new functional by j of y which is integral from x 0 to x 1 y of x square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. Let me denote it by this new number 1 double prime and further this optimization is for fixed boundary conditions. So, I from now on I am going to denote my boundary condition with this short notation b dot c. My boundary conditions are y of x naught is y naught and y at x 1 is y 1. So, this is the case of a fixed boundary condition problem. A similar um, uh, and a more general version of this catenary problem is the problem of catenoid. So, what is the problem of catenoid. So, let us again go back to our diagram of catenary. We have this rope which is hanging between rope which is hanging between the two cables y 0 to y 1 and further suppose we are able to rotate this, this cable along, along this x axis. Right. So, we can see that we can see that it is going to generate it is going to generate a surface of revolution about the axis of rotation x and this this particular surface that I am talking about this particular surface is the catenoid. So, this is my this is my catenoid catenoid. Okay. So, so, catenoid is the surface, the surface of revolution, catenoid is the surface of revolution with minimum area, catenoid is the surface of revolution with minimum area that is generated, that is generated generated by revolving
that is generated by revolving the catenary. Right. So, so in this case the extremal we want to find the extremal of the following functional j of y which is my this is my area functional. So, we are trying to minimize the area of the surface of revolution. So, the area right. So, we are trying to minimize this area and the area could be is given by the integral x 0 to x 1. So, this is my point x 0 and this is my point x 1 and so, so the area is given by the the area of this irregular cylinder which is 2 pi times y absolute value of y which is the height the absolute value of y is the height of of this catenary times times d s which is the lateral length of this cable or the arc length. Okay. So, moving along one major assumption in the catenary problem is one major assumption is that we have to assume certain constraints on the length of the cable right. The length of the cable L has to be greater than or equal to the distance between between the two points sorry the length of the cable is has to be the greater than or equal to the distance between the two points because if l is equal to if l is equal to this particular square root distance we see that the solution to the catenary problem is just a straight line gives straight line gives straight line as solution okay so then uh, so a, a, a modified version of this problem is we can assume that the length which is given by the integral of this arc length or or this following integral 